Breaking news, we need to know who was in that building exactly. We need names, the building that was overlooking Crooks' alleged shooting position, and it's starting to look more and more likely that there were several guns involved, which means several perpetrators. Hello, everyone. Dr. Chris Martinson here. Listen, I appreciate, listen, everybody who's fed stuff back into me, uh, mountains of it. Thank you. This is what we have to do. Citizen journalism. We got to like capture this stuff while we can. It's uh, it's really, really pretty serious. I mean, check this out. I'm, I'm here on um, the channel of Heavy Duty Country, right? And uh, really awesome. They just put out this great video here. And first thing I'm going to do is skip past the ads. But check this out. This is really bizarre to me. Because our government just can't come out and say it. They can't just come out and say, you know what? This is what happened. It's yeah. all verifiable. That's it. Instead, they want to let the American people wonder. It's a mm. disservice to America. And everybody who's trying to cover this up, you're a traitor. One more thing before we get started. Joe Biden said, now is the time to come together. How do we come together if we don't know what happened? Think about that one, Joe. Jesus Christ, dude. So I want to give credit where credit is due because this guy did a fantastic Oh, he goes in. He goes into my stuff, but listen to this. Totally late, and they're trying to control the information. Sean, they tried to kick me off of the site. They said, "Get out of." That's Senator Josh Hawley. Listen to him. The FBI is kicking him off. He's senator, U.S. senator, wants on the site. You shouldn't be on the site. We don't want you here. Get out of here. They are trying to control the information. Absolutely. They brought. They brought local cops. Sean, get this. I'm there on site. I had permission from the local. A security operator to be there, and they, the FBI came out and said, you have got to leave. The thing is that most of the detail assigned to Trump that day into that rally were not Secret Service, that most of them were from other federal agencies, including Homeland Security, and Sean, they weren't prepared. Does the government not well, understand that you're the reason why they... All right, that's beautiful. Listen to the whole thing. I'll put the link down in the show notes. Sorry I didn't have time to drop that in as a proper video, but, but think about this. The FBI is washing down the roof, right? They uh, are just controlling the site and they're just like controlling and they won't. How many press briefings have you heard? I've heard zero press briefings, right, that had any details at all. We still don't know how many shots were fired out of the rifle. We don't know. I haven't even established that Crooks is the shooter. Everybody knows that. But do we know it? Have we seen empty spent casings? Have we seen the powder residue on his hands uh, report, have we seen that that gun has been fired? Have we seen how many bullets are left in cartridges are left in the magazine and how many are left in the box he had and that those sort of add up? Have we seen that the bullets that were recovered downfield and from people's bodies actually match the ones that he bought? No, none of that. We know none of that. Now, we're going to have to move on. Uh, so here, first, remember, I showed I, I had you listen to this. This is the audio that I've been using to analyze from one point of view, right? Not not from Trump's mic. We've got that. We've got some other mics all around. Now I'm going to show you three separate audios, all from around that building. And so this one here, we'll listen to this first. And this is what the video looks like here. Look what happened to our country. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit all right so several of you had some very fair comments you said look that camera is moving all around and they have very directional mics so it's possible that those first three which we can hear again which go thunk 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 just sound totally different from the ones that go crack, 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 crack. And then number six, shot six, totally different. I think that one's a, uh, uh, a law enforcement weapon. I'm pretty sure that's all the way back at uh, in uh, building the two story building right there. But we're going to build that case very carefully down below. You're going to see this is the audio signature for this particular video. It's very nice audio signature. You can see here the oh, let me get my laser pointer out. You can see here. First shot, second shot, third shot, right? Very nice. By the way, this one has echoes that come off afterwards, so we can figure out how far away this gun is for these shots. 
from the actual place which is echoing, which for these people, I think you'll see it's a red, one of the red barn faces over there. So shot, echo, shot, echo, shot, echo. And then we have here, one, two, three, four, five, and then six. This one has a totally different sound. Um, and so if we look at, I'll come back to that in a second. If we look where these people are, they're somewhere in this blue oval here. You can, as the video scans past, you can see they're looking at a jumbotron, which is downstream here. And you can see that they're looking past a yellow lift all right here that has a whole bunch of uh, a rack of speakers on it. Okay, so going back to this real quick and getting my pointer back again. Let's start over again, see what happens here. You can see the speakers. Then listen to this. He's got a gun. Like everybody sees this. Everybody's seen this. We're going to get into this more. You will not believe the story you're about to hear in terms of what was going on with law enforcement in that second building at the whole time that this crooks character is just wandering around and laser pointing stuff and climbing up onto roofs. It is an absolutely unbelievable story which I have to confess does reinforce my view of suspecting that there also is going to be a second gun because there's something really wrong with the story. Of course, we already knew that. We knew that. But now we're looking for evidence. And by the way, here's how I roll. I had a lot of pushback from trolls around all of this. That's fine. Uh, probable disinformation agents. That's fine. It's part of the business. Uh, but there were people who came in and tried to put in solid analytical work. But, you know, they started with an assumption and you can't do that in this business. So here's how I roll. When I do my investigations, I have three things that I'm always following. The first is it's always you start with the data. You might have a hypothesis. Here's a hypothesis. Crooks shot all those shots, okay? We'd call that the null hypothesis. And our job is to gather data and we want to disprove the null hypothesis. So if we keep gathering data and it just all lines up with he was the shooter, we didn't disprove the null hypothesis, therefore our hypothesis can stand. He was the shooter, right? So um, is the null hypothesis correct? Was Crooks the shooter? That's what we're trying to establish. Now, I can't still, to this moment, guarantee that he shot even one shot out of his gun because I don't have any of the base data. What we do have is evidence. So the second thing I'm going to promise you is we start with those first principles, but the second thing is we build it off of the data we have, okay? So the shots recorded sounds of the shots that's data wherever the bullet struck is data whatever how many cartridges would be lying around spent would be data so we have to start with the data and then we'll build back towards a hypothesis right now i don't have any particular hypothesis but i am telling you the data i have is stacking up very clearly that we have it three we're going to hear three weapons in this particular video clip and then i'll hear it play you another one and another one but you decide if that's what you're hearing Next time, probably tomorrow, I have the full audio analysis of the three shots, the five shots, plus some other mystery shots down at the other end. I'm going to do my level best to add it all up. I think I've made sense of it, but I need just a little bit more time to make complete sense out of it. Now, is what we're hearing consistent with just one gun? Because the official story as it stands is Crooks shot three shots, then five more. Nobody mentions the sixth. And then 10 seconds later, a sniper one in a million shot, took him out with a shot right over the left eyebrow. Okay, I can locate that shot, by the way. That shot, no problem. Everything lines up. No mystery about that shot. I've got it on several mics. The time delay is perfect. It's a suppressed weapon, probably a 300 um, caliber 308, 300 Win Mag. I don't know. But uh, it's a clearly a heavier round, and that one's easy. That one's easy. So we'll, I'll show you the easy stuff. Tomorrow we're going to get into the hard stuff because there's some... Something a little funkadoo about that last cluster of shots as they arrive down in the stands and around Trump. So, um, but back to this for the moment. Oh, third thing. I forgot the third thing. Third thing is when I make a mistake, I'll tell you, I will own up to that. There, we're going to move fast and we're going to do the best we possibly can. Will we get everything right? No. We'll tell you when we don't. Okay. So the criticisms we heard on the first part of the audio analysis were, Microphone is moving. You can't tell anything from that. Okay. Second um, would be that uh, uh, you're just you're just a moron and you can't hear things properly. Okay. Gonna gonna let me dispel that a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit of a gun nerd. Okay. I've probably shot two hundred fifty thousand rounds in my life. Uh, I do a lot of pistol, variety of uh, calibers of of rifle work. 
I wouldn't consider myself a long range shooter, but I'm pretty good intermediate range shooter. And I load my own bullets, both um, small and large pistol uh, for primers and also small and large rifle. So I, 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 I'm pretty much of a nerd about this stuff. So I have a little bit of a passing knowledge with this, about 40 years of experience shooting, taking some training, this and that. But have I ever been a sniper? No, no, no. Have I ever like had bullets snapping over my head? Nope. They've always been luckily going that way down the range, never this way. So so that's who I am, but uh, boy, I can make sense of things. And so if I do make a mistake, I'll let you know. Now, here's what we got, and we're going to listen again. Now, this is just, I've just isolated, we're just listening to this little clip that you're looking at here now, not the whole larger clip, but in this larger clip. Stay under here. Crack. Okay. Listen to that. Those first three sound to me like they have a thump, thump, thump. The next five have a crack, 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 crack. And then the last one is just totally sharper, very different sound. Uh, and so it's possible. What are the possibilities that these are two, two weapons, one being fired from inside of a room, potentially, or something that's muffling it a little bit. The second one uh, being fired out in the open. I'm going to draw a lot of, you're, you're going to have trouble once you see what I found out about that second string of five shots. Anybody who's a shooter, you're going to be like, that's stupid. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is that it's possible that maybe somehow Crooks, if we take the null hypothesis, Crooks is down there, one, two, three measured shots, but then he like, ah, that didn't work out. So he might, he might come up to a higher elevation. The gun might be less muzzled, muffled, and he shots, shoots off five more but wait do you see what i see <laughs> you're gonna be like no nah, that didn't happen okay um but oh let's listen to this at least one more time Stay under here. okay one more time bunk 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 pop 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 crack okay very different sound to that shot number six Hear that? Okay. Last time, because we're going to just, I just really want this to be cemented in so we all have a good chance of. Okay. Again, this was somewhere in this vicinity right here. Um, and I wish I could be a little bit more accurate, but it's okay. So if the shooter was here or here, somewhere back here, what we're just hearing is pretty interesting. We're only hearing the shots. I don't hear in this uh, particular trace here the actual cracks, but I'd have to bring it into my full audio analysis to see if I'm actually hearing the supersonic snaps. If we're not, that means those bullets are passing reasonably overhead and not really leaving a snap. So it gives us a sense of potentially how far away a bullet can be before you kind of lose the snap. That snap is the supersonic crack again, where it's traveling faster than the speed of sound. It leaves a cone of sound behind it it's like lightning when it goes and creates uh you know thunder thunder is just a sonic boom because that l that air of, from the lightning is displaced it faster than the speed of sound and when you do that you create a sonic boom wave so those boom waves travel out a sonic boom really up close is a snap very, very uh, upsetting you know 130 40 decibel thing uh, and then further away you get the more it becomes diffuse and rumbly so i'll handle that analyze that tomorrow to see what we got there. Now here's a second location, okay? And just so you know, it's just so we can, before we get there, the second location, best I can place it is right here. This is the sec two-story building. This is the building again. Oh shoot, I don't, I got it. It's right here. This is the two-story building that we're gonna be focusing on. And before I said, that's the place that, if you were gonna put a sniper on a roof, this is the roof, man. You see this whole complex, you see everything here. You're not overlapping your field of fire too much with these guys, with these snipers down here. They can hot and trot all across this region. You got this whole region. Great coverage. Who was the special agent in charge? Oh, that would have been Tim Burke. We finally have a name. The, soup, the special agent in charge who made the decision to place both snipers within, basically, they were on top of each other as far as snipers are concerned. They're not close quarter battle types of folks I've been reading about and hearing and people have been telling me. They reach out and touch people. So, Trump's inner ring of people with pistols would have been here. There would have been people with close quarter combat weapons just a little bit further out. Snipers should have been here. 
and as far away as possible, 250 to 400 yards, they should be there because they can reach out and touch people to 1,000 yards um, pretty reliably. So good training, all that. So this is where this next piece was. So see if you hear the difference between those first three shots and those next five, given that we're in an entirely different location, because maybe the location had something to do with it. Maybe. So let's start there. And here we go. First, we're just going to look at the whole, the, the video, and then we'll just listen to the sound file a few times. <laughs> Okay, we don't need to listen to too much of the screaming mm, um, but because there's quite a bit of it. Uh, so again, we're, there's a tree over to the left with some buildings. As they swing past this way, you can see there's another tree and then there's a two-story building and then the flat building, which looks like a long, low, sheddy kind of a roof kind of a thing. Let's look at that one more time. He's got a gun on the roof. So the position of this roof, plus you heard that crack, that tells us pretty much where we are. And again, we're right about here. We're under a tree and we've got this right in front of us. And then this is just off to the side. So I'm not totally sure we aren't under this tree, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we're under this tree. So that gives us a lot of information about what we're going to hear in terms of echoes and things like that. Just to be clear, if there was a shooter for whatever reason up here, if it, they were shooting, there's a chance of echoing off of this building. Whereas uh, if this person is shooting from here, there's no chance of a nearby echo because the gun is facing this way. You would have to have a long echo that would come back to here. So the echoes that we see here on those first three shots, they're close. They echo from really close in somewhere. So that's like a big clue. So it makes it's really pointing to somebody being in that second two story building. Let's listen to it a couple of times. Just just again, just key in tonal quality of the first three to the next five. To the last one. Okay. So if you watch this again, it, there's not that much movement in the camera um, relatively. There's some. Got to count for that. It could be that the, the, the directional mic is facing a slightly different direction. So watch where you see the camera sort of pointing as it's firing compared to the first and the and the first three in the next five. All right. The way I look at that, it's pointed this way and then it points this way, but the camera is still in the same orientation. It's not changing. It's not going. It's not flipping. It's just pointed this way, you know, or I guess it's in horizontal mode. And then it goes to this way. And the person may take a few steps, but that's really not a lot of steps to change the auditory cap uh, capacity of what you're hearing. OK, uh, it's really not going to do it all that much. They're facing this way. It rotates this way and they take looks like a couple of steps, but um, pretty solid orientation. <laughs> So that could account for, I mean, if you had it this way and the microphone was facing the first three uh, and then facing away or vice versa, that could have an effect. We're running some tests on that uh, this week to see if we can replicate that particular thing. But interestingly, it has the same effect as that other camera all the way on the other end. It was going through its own wild gyrations, of course, but it still came away for me with that same muted thup, 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 and then that much sharper tuk, 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 and then that final crack um again let's listen in <laughs> different echoes everything's different when you get really in so tomorrow we're going to go through the actual sound signatures i'll show you exactly how to read this stuff and and you know what we'll all become mini experts in this but it, it's listen it's just using your common sense and you can uh, you can see this stuff it's like right there there's the echo how long how many milliseconds away was it that gives you a sense of what sort of hard surface you're dealing with. It'll tell you something about uh, the quality of where the, the sound shot is. You can look at the waveform of the shots and um, the bullet 
traces or the uh, snaps from the Sonics. Well, you can do all of that, right? And you can clearly see, oh, these are bullets snapping over. And these are the explosions from the guns, right? Downrange at the downrange ones. But down here, we got that. Um, we got those two. Now, if that was it, well, we've also now got a third one that we can sort of throw into the mix. This one, there's a lot of screaming in this one. Uh, very hard even to hear those first three shots. Again, let me place it for you very quickly before we go too far. This one is here. I think the other one was a little bit further here. This one's a, just a few steps further to, if we call this south, but it's not, um, a few steps further towards the fairgrounds. The other dot would be about under this tree. Because we saw the person was standing right here. You saw them filming this tree. They swiveled this way, but they ended up under this tree. These people are starting just to the side of the tree. They're facing the side of this two-story building. Perfect spot to capture what we're about to hear. And um, this was the same location that people were filming crooks crawling up on the roof. So this is a really, this is an important one. So let's listen in. Very different sound from this one, right? But the same effect, which is thuck, 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 crack, 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 snap. On the Come on, get over here! Come on, get over here! Come on, get over here! So in this one, you can act, this is going to be a fun one to analyze. You can hear on that, the first three, the first one, the third one almost disappears for some reason. I'm not clear what's happening there. But on those last five, you can hear the, you can hear absolute echoes coming off of those. Okay. So again, we're here. Here's why this one is stupid important. Um, I'm going to play here. I just took again, just over and over. Oh my God. If we could just get just a couple more frames. Oh, if they had just stayed on point, this would be amazing. Uh, what I'm going to watch you to look for, Crooks is up there, and they actually are on him for a fraction of a second for the first shot. And now, yeah, I know these are only two, two, threes, but trust me, there's a there's a little pop. There's a little jerk there. There's a little something that happens. Uh, they give a kick, right? It's not the biggest kicking cartridge in the world, but it has a kick, okay? And this doesn't look like the world's biggest guy to me. And it doesn't even matter if he is the world's biggest guy. The gun will always jump and depends, you know, how far your shoulder is going to move. Watch his shoulder at the time the shot is taken. Now, I can't confirm or guarantee that somebody hasn't mucked around with this video, but this is the earliest one that came out of this angle from TMZ. It matches all the other ones from this angle that are out there. I haven't found one that has a different audio signature to it. So unless somebody who first uploaded it had mucked with the, the, the sound and overlaid uh, a different, you know, move the track on there. That's a possibility. I like to get the objections right out of the way. But if that hasn't happened, see if you see what I see in this thing. Watch his shoulder. You see that? Watch his shoulder right there. And... And... And there is no, no movement to his, no, like there's no movement, none. He is just dead still on that first shot. Okay. So again, I, I'm really concerned that what we're seeing here is those first three shots were not taken by that dude lying there on the roof. And again, we still don't know if that guy on the roof has even taken a single shot at all. Because we have no data. The FBI is even locking out Josh Hawley, locking everybody out there, probably busy washing roofs down and dismantling stages and taking it all apart. And then saying, oh, gosh, what a shame. There's some analyses that we could do if only we hadn't done that. Right. Because that's literally how they roll over and over again. I, it must just be horrifying to people who work there who have high integrity uh, when there's when there's uh, they're not interested in the actual truth. Of the situation but i do care about the truth i know you care about the truth that's why we're all watching this together and going through this together so again here's the audio signature for this one it's a lot harder to analyze because somebody's doing a whole lot of screaming um ross get over here ah! so um it's very hard to analyze around that maybe somebody with better audio skills than i can 
have uh, could sort of figure out a way to filter through that. But when you do, often you're pulling away um, some of the actual noise of the shot, too. And I'm kind of a purist. But one more time, watch right at that shot. Let me zoom in right there. That shoulder will not move. Nothing. There's no, the hair doesn't blow. Um, so, so when you're shooting an AR type of a thing, I don't, again, I don't know exactly which one he has, but a very typical configuration is you're going to have a charging handle and you're going to have an ejection port and it's going to, you know, fire back and, and the gases are going to come back and throw the bolt back, open the receiver and eject the spent brass. And then it's going to slam forward again. So there's no, like his hair doesn't even like ripple. Like there's all kinds of things happening there um, that, and it just not least of which is the kick itself. So I don't see any of that. Let's keep this in the yellow category. I, I categorize my date into three buckets. Green, I'm positive about it, right? Got it. It's rock solid, right? Bullets flew that day. Green, right? Uh, I'm good with that. Yellow is this one because I can't, I need to, I'm going to want to see the raw footage from this particular camera and we're going to want to have it so that we could take it in its highest possible resolution and look at that exact tiny bit of time there where that, um, where that shot is being taken and we don't see that movement. But uh, without that yellow, we'll keep it. And it's not in red. Red's the third category. We'll keep this in the yellow category. Red category is that was stupid and it didn't turn out to be true and it was false and we accidentally bit. So off we went. So here are those three sets of noises you've got. You've got recording from here. You got a recording from here and a recording from here. And they're all telling you the same thing. There's first three shots and they sound comprehensively different from the next five shots. And they, they are different. I can show you tomorrow. They have different echo signatures. So they're, they're from slightly different spots or facing different ways. Something's happening. And then even more to the point, when we get to those five shots tomorrow, I'm going to show you what happens to those when those end up downrange. Because uh, the first three, clean as day, I can track for all of them. Everything lines up. No surprise echoes. Nothing's weird. Uh, the crack and the snap, are the, the crack boom are exactly 0.221 seconds apart. All of them, there's no mysteries to those first three. And there's no mysteries to three of the five, but two of the five, there's some mysteries involved. So we'll get to that tomorrow. Um, and again, that last sniper shot, no mystery to that, but there's some weirdness going on early on. Now, if we, and then that sixth shot, I have a, a hypothesis for that. And here we go. So this is why we do what we do, because the FBI came out on the uh, 14th. That's the day after the shootings on the 13th. The FBI comes right out and believes that the rally shooter acted alone. Oh, come on, FBI. This is just so lame. They always come out and believe something stupid right up front. This is not how you conduct an investigation. You say, we don't have all the evidence in yet, and we're going to follow every piece of evidence until we're pretty positive we know what happened here, okay? And we don't start with the motive. What was his motive? Like, who cares? We need the base data. What were his actions? Where did he go? What did he buy? Who did he talk to? Were there any other players around there? What's the all the forensics going to tell us? Where are all the bullets? Where are all of the trajectories? Where were each of the injured people actually hanging out? What bullets or bullet fragments were recovered from the injured people? What other bullet strikes can we account for? You know, how many bullets are we missing? Do they match if we can forensically match them, assuming they haven't disintegrated, right? There's just so many questions you would ask even before you're like, I wonder if he hated Trump. You know, that, who cares, right? That's later. First, you got to, you, while, the, while everything's hot, you got to come up with, a, a case for what is actually happening. So get this gateway pundit, very explosive, just came out with this today. The assassin eyewitness police said that police are lying about the rooftop confrontation with the alleged sniper and that there were guys on the second floor of that two story building that were watching, but they didn't do anything. Quote, uh, and this is great stuff by um, Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Wetmore there. Uh, good stuff. Thank you, Benjamin, for actually going and talking to people like a journalist does. I think that's awesome. So they got an exclusive here and it's awesome. Wait, do you see this? Over the last week, much of the federal narrative, he says here, has broken down trying to explain the events. As the sniper's body was recovered on the roof or the alleged sniper's body was recovered on the roof of the American Glass Research Company's warehouse, 
in Butler, Pennsylvania. Within a few days, it emerged that snipers were in the second floor overlooking the sniper's body in an adjoining building. Uh, were they there when he was shooting? Because that's going to be really awkward if they were. Um, Because why didn't they do something about him? Remember, there's two whole minutes with people like, there's a gun, like just all shouting, there's a guy on the roof with a gun, right? Two whole minutes. You heard from each one of those three videos. He's got a gun. Somebody's yelling that out, right? So people saw it. Something's going on here. Um, the often repeated Part of the official story quoting here is that a Butler County Sheriff's deputy climbed on top of the roof moments before the shooting, prior to the shooting, to confront the alleged shooter, Thomas Crooks. And Crooks responded by pointing his weapon at the deputy who then fell off an eight foot ladder. Well, I've also heard that he was boosted up by a it changes all the time. I was being actually I haven't heard anything from the actual municipal officer themselves. I've heard the county, whoever that is, spokesperson or commissioner saying that he was boosted up now we're reading that maybe there was an at a ladder he fell off of if it's an eight foot ladder it's probably that orange one we see outside of the front door which tip was uh sort of tapered that one went up to um towards the front uh part i could see that at any rate that's the story he fell off um but get this so eyewitnesses from the ground who saw the shooter on the roof at the butler trump rally described seeing snipers in the second story of the AGR building, they, they saw snipers in that, okay? Not, when? Good question. We get there. Speaking yesterday exclusively to Gateway Pundit, uh, the eyewitness said there's a lot more to the story that is not being reported by the mainstream media. Though they could not get a clear look at them, they described seeing one sniper in particular with a sleeve tattoo. The building staff had been chasing off Trump supporters earlier that day, people who wanted to walk up to the property to the security fence to get a better shot of America's president later. Um, better shot phrasing, Benjamin. Later, when the group tried again, the security was nowhere to be found. So they went onto the field. That sounds a little loose for sure. OK, so this eyewitness says, yeah, there were there were snipers in that in that building, that second store, that two story building on the second floor. <laughs> And one of them had a sleeve tattoo. You mean like this sleeve tattoo? So these two guys on the right are, I'm almost positive, they are Beaver County Emergency Services Unit dudes. And I've played a video and they've, they've got lots of training and obviously they're all kitted up. And I would love to see whatever cameras they might have had running when they first got up there. And then you, there's two, uh, what I might call plain, regular clothed policemen, not plain clothes, regular clothed in the black, one crouching down in the back. The other one obviously standing to the left there. And it's still light enough out that they're squinting away. It's important when I show you what happens, something that happens next. So bright light, they're there. I have seen zero pictures of what it was like when they first got there, um, exactly how he was positioned, where his weapon was positioned, and whether or how much spent brass was lying around his body at that point in time. That would be good stuff. Now, remember this... Um, uh, oh, wait, before we get there, uh, this is continuing from Benjamin's amazing article in the Gateway Pundit said, here is the relevant excerpt from the CBS story about the rooftop fight between the sheriff deputies and crooks. So Butler County Sheriff Michael Sloop, Sloop A, confirmed to K <laughs> KDKA TV that an armed municipal officer, a muni officer with Butler Township encountered shooter Thomas Crooks before he fired shots from a rooftop building outside the perimeter of former President Trump's rally. The sheriff said he was not made aware of any potential threats, but confirmed an officer encountered the shooter on the roof and didn't fire his weapon. Okay. All I know in red underline is the officer had both hands on the roof to get up on the roof, never made it because the shooter had turned toward the officer and rightfully and smartly the officer let go, Sheriff Sloop said. Sheriff Sloop also says before the shooting, the officer and others were previously alerted to a suspicious person and began searching for him right away. Sheriff Sloop said his this officer was hoisted by another officer to the roof of the building where the shooter had taken a position. So you would think, OK, details can change, but it's pretty big details. Like, how did this officer like first, who was the officer? How did they get eyes on this dude? OK, they dropped down because they didn't want a rifle pointed straight at them. But then who did they call? And all we've heard is that shortly 
thereafter, shots rang out. But is this is this geologically shortly? Because that's like a million years. Is this uh, astrologically shortly? Shortly to a turtle or an amoeba? Like, it's not a time, right? We would need to know, like, come on, give me a guess. Like, eight seconds, okay? Then we would have some data we could go on. However, key witness Greg Smith, who now has a name, uh, exclusively told the Gateway Pundit, quote, I saw him, the sniper, crooks, right before the shots happened, and I didn't see him turn around and confront anyone. I never saw that, and it didn't happen. We asked all the people around us in our group, and we didn't see that. I heard the story about the officer falling and hurting his foot. No one saw that. Now, he could have been on the other side of the building, and I think he was. However, I've heard the stories, but I have no idea what they are talking about. So this is Greg, and uh, I think you remember him. If you don't, I've got a quick video we can from the day of. That's a shot from the video day of. Okay, Greg, you have important, important information here. So let's imagine, okay, maybe Greg was on the other side of the building where this is supposed to have happened. But the whole idea, you can see crooks crawling up on the roof, right? You can see the video. He's crawling up on the roof, mm, 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 right? And then he sort of squirtles into, you know, shooter prone position. And this guy and his friends say they had eyes on him the whole time and that you would have clearly seen crooks turn around and point the gun at the officer if that story was accurate okay if it's not accurate we have other questions but you can clearly see from the videos that we do have where i can see you can see the crooks is now in view and he's sort of bat crawling or bear crawling as this guy called it and getting up into his prone position you never see him do what would be a full turnaround to point that weapon okay so the fact the idea that he did turn around point a weapon at an officer, and seconds later, shots fired out, that's false. So what's going on here? How do you get a story this foundational foundational wrong? Because the other possibility is that the officer was confronted much earlier in the day, many, many non-geologic seconds earlier, uh, and had, had uh, for some reason, nothing happened. Like, somehow, what is this, Uvalde all over again? Like, like three minutes ago, he saw this guy on a roof on the back of the AGR complex and got, you know, got scared off the, the thing. And then what? And then, then they all went talking about what they should do about it instead of doing something about it. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It smells to high heaven. It's it's a very odd, odd story. And it doesn't fit. And I am don't ever know what the truth is, but I am exceedingly good at smelling BS. Right now, this story is BS about that the police are telling okay but get this explosively this greg guy also relates that the snipers in the second floor section of the agr building were watching the rooftop shooter as the shots rang out and did nothing i'm just gonna let that hang in the air for just a second according to greg the snipers in the second floor section of the agr building were watching the rooftop shooter as the shots rang out and did nothing, he said, quote, I was looking all around to get law enforcement's intention before the shots, and I could tell it was coming because as I was standing there for several minutes, and who knows, time can be dilated or compressed when you're in a situation like this, so take that with a grain of salt, but I trust him more than the officers at this point. As I was standing there for several minutes, I kept thinking, why is Trump still talking? Obvious question. You expect someone to be on the radio or whatever the protocol is to get Trump off the stage. I knew this isn't good. I expected the shots to start, and then they did. It was mass chaos. I was looking at the guys on the second story. My eyes were jumping three or four different places. I could see that they saw him, and they were looking at him and watching what he was doing, but they didn't do anything. Butler County Sheriff's deputies have said that their body cameras were turned off and that no footage is available from the incident. Okay, well, what about the emergency service unit guys? Were all of their cameras turned off? Was everybody's camera just turned off this day? Starting to get a little of that smell about this whole thing. It's just not smelling good. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm not feeling good about this. Uh, but get but but so according to an eyewitness, eyes on, and he described a sleeve which fits one of the ESU guys. They were in that second story building. And they're looking down. Now, we can't come up with that many explanations for why somebody 
would just stare at a dude with a gun pointed at the president. Um, one, they let it happen. Two, they thought it was a training exercise because they had been misled by somebody above them in the food chain. Um, three, they're blind. Four, nope, I'm out of ideas. Okay. Um, so again, let's not forget that, that this is Greg Smith here. In This is important because this is uh, by a BBC reporter. This is in just in the minutes after this whole thing. So this is fresh and you're getting probably his freshest take on things. And watch the, and listen to the rally, right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking. I'm estimating here. I have no idea, you know, but... Um, we noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. He, you know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two, three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know... Five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three and to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police in the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? Hey, there you go. He's 100% sure that the shots came from Crooks, but I didn't hear him say that he saw the shots come. Uh, I wonder if those if five of those shots came from him or if all eight or whatnot. So I'd be interested. Now, I know somebody personally who chased this guy down. He's a real guy. So So Greg Smith is a real dude. He's not like that mysterious plant who shows up, has a really awesome statement you never hear from again because he's an operative for one of the political parties or a three-letter agency or some weird corporation. It doesn't matter. Um, so he's a real dude. So uh, you, you can take that to the bank. Okay. Now, this is where it gets fascinating. So on um, Jeff Ostroff, a great channel, by the way. You should watch a lot of his stuff. is great on talk. Just really good stuff. Great video production and uh, very nice analysis. However, we're going to just talk about this one still frame. I don't have time to review his whole video here uh july 13 2024 5 14 p.m one hour before shooting this picture is taken okay so at 5 14 we have a just just a timestamp on it that's why i grabbed that image from uh jeff Estrop there okay so this is interesting on july 17th this is in the post a chilling photo of would-be trump shooter thomas matthew crooks taken by sniper they're calling that one of those people if they're a sniper as well uh nearly an hour before attempt assassination so Look at this. Look at this. The image was taken around 530. So is it 514, 530? They say around. So I'm going to go with Jeff's stuff because I think that's more accurate. But, well, I don't know. doesn't matter because the first shots didn't ring out till 611. So at 530 at the latest on Saturday, a local police counter sniper officer. So that's not one of the muni guys in the black stuff. That's one of those ESU guys, emergency services unit guys in the camo. Uh who reported Crooks was a suspicious person on the grounds outside Trump's rally. Hmm. Uh, news station WXPI reported. XPI is doing, WXPI is doing great work on this, by the way. They are, uh, they get, they get high marks for me. Crooks can be seen in the photo sporting long brown hair and glasses while wearing a great t-shirt representing the popular YouTube gun channel Demolition Ranch, which I watch all the time. Hey, Matt, I am so sorry. That's just, uh, uh that's awkward. Sorry. Um, and it was unclear in the picture if Crooks had a gun on him then. <laughs> well, I hope it was clear because he was only like 20 feet away from a emergency services unit guy. Like he was right there. And I'll show you exactly where he was because uh, one of the Internet sleuths out there 
located exactly where that picture was taken. And when you see it, you're going to be like, hmm, this is starting to smell really bad. Okay, quote, law enforcement sources told the station that the sniper, a member of the Beaver County Emergency Services Unit, searched the grounds for crooks after sending the picture to someone, to outer space, we don't know. But he had moved from the location where the picture was taken. So again, this is the photo here. It's pretty close photo. You can see grass on his right. He's got his hand on some kind of a concrete, poured concrete wall of some kind there. It's dark on the left, so it might be a retaining wall where the, the grass is a little higher. Then you got the cron concrete, and then it's a little lower. So we're going to be looking for a concrete retaining wall where we can have grass on the right with the sun off to our right side there. And by the way, this comes from the magician who goes by at Justice Coyote. Uh, this was the first person to make me aware of this particular location on Twitter. So thank you for dropping that there. Anybody else, if you got stuff, drop it to me. I, it's, we have to do our, do our journalism here. So um, the magician, uh, Justice Coyote, is saying here again, so this means the picture of crooks from above was taken from this window in the photo below. Oh, would you look? Oh, yeah. That's where all those people were clustered taking when they were out on the grass, just a little over taking those two vo videos of the shots as they uh, came out. And what else am I going to tell you about this? This is where Crook's body was found right here. And this is the window that they would have been looking down. There's a little retaining wall right there, right there. It means that this is the window that just a little bit overlooks that retaining wall. So if we look here, um, at, uh, this is uh, Marty Aba, A-B-U-H, had this picture here. You can very clearly see this retaining wall here. This is a Google Earth thing, so they can be a little goofy looking. I think the trees are sort of rendered more than more than a real picture. But um, you can see this retaining wall right here. You got grass on the right. The sun would have been off to this direction. And yep, it all fits. And of course, we have, well, we got these windows here. And this is where his body would have been found. It would have been right about here. Okay. So... And right here is where the ladder would have been. So the, the police, if I'm going to, if I have the story right, would have looked up over this edge. Crooks would have been about here, would have turned around and pointed his rifle at the police officer here, and then carried on his married way and been unmolested for a few minutes. When, how long do you think it would have taken you as a police officer who knew, who'd taken a picture of him below, and maybe even had been standing in that window looking at him? That, like, this is such a chip shot. This is like 40 feet from here to here from here to here. And I'll show you why I'm moving my red dot from this point to where Crooks's body is from here to here. Who was in this room? Who was up there at the time of the shooting? We need to know because those people have some really important questions. They got to be asked and all of that. So that means that this is the window here and that's the retaining wall right there, which means that that police officer was 10 feet away when that picture was taken. That ESU person, okay, right? And again, Crooks would have been right about here. I want you to notice something. Do you see that window? See the shadow it's casting? This is after the after everything um, it was over. And so you see serve emergency services vehicle there, police car there. This window is open. This window has a perfect shot. I mean, just like close your eyes and you're going to hit the guy, right? Kind of a shot. So this is interesting because they said here, way back here on the 17th, I believe, and yeah, CBS News, they said the sniper was one of three snipers. The sniper, this, the sniper in this case, ESU sniper in that building, was one of three snipers, members of a local tactical teams who were stationed inside the building that the shooter used in the attack. Not quite. They, they weren't in that little low building, the building. They were in that larger building there. So they don't have this quite right in this reporting. The op and by the way, simple reporting. There's a lot of buildings in that complex. They have numbers. Just add, just use the numbers. I mean, they already, like, Building 6 is that low flat one that Crooks is, I know that because I went to Google Earth and I looked. So just, can you just number the buildings and not call them the two-story building or that one near where he was or just, it's not hard. The buildings have numbers. Please just use them going forward. Um, the operations plan had them stationed inside looking out windows toward the rally. I'm glad to hear they even had an operations plan because it wasn't clear to this point until you told me. I wasn't sure they had one. Scanning the crowd, the details about the three snipers were first reported by local news outlet uh, Beaver, uh, Countian .com. Beaver Countian. 
Oh, I got to go to that. At any rate, uh, that's what we know. Now, again, as I pointed out, this is the most logical, obvious spot to place a sniper team. You would never put one here and one here because they're just stepping on top of each other. You know, their, their effective footprints are basically fully overlapping, which is no bueno. Put one here if you must, uh, fine, and then they can cover all of this territory. But if you had one here, obviously this would be the most logical spot to cover a lot of territory. They did not do that. Now, let's take a look at this again. Now that we know what we know, we're going to, this is an overflight video that happens, which is totally mysterious. This helicopter, you can see Crook's body on the roof, is totally mysterious because, like, there's nobody in the pictures. Like, a neutron bomb went off. It's like, Oh, we got bored. You know, there was like a near assassination of a president. So we just left the body and we had to go get dinner. I don't know what the heck's going on here, but it doesn't look like what I thought a crime scene would look like. Um, Very weird. So here we're circling around. You can see there's Crooks' body circled in red in case you missed it. Um, And as we swing around here, there's nobody. There's just like a few cars in the parking lot. There's a motorcycle, a couple of marked cars, some unmarked cars. No people mysteriously nobody on the roof securing it there's nobody guarding the ladder to make sure nobody goes up the ladder to mess with the crime scene that's just a very bizarre set of things i don't know what to make of that but i will have you notice something which is this window whoops this window right here is open so let me bring this back to about here i'll stop it real soon Right about, oh, back that up a tiny bit. Mm. Hey, Bill Gates, if you ever wanted to fix PowerPoint, you would have the, your video player be able to forward and back a little bit without just rewinding the whole stupid thing. Use your billions for that instead of, you know, all the other stuff you're doing. Um, so this turns out there's an open window here. And there's this open window here. So in the scheme of things, if you thought there was somebody on this roof and you had two minutes and your cars are all parked here, it is such a simple matter to either enter this door, run through this building up uh, what I presume is a flight of stairs, and then just take a shot out of this window or this window. Or you could run in this door and come through either this walkway or this con uh, building connector, go up some stairs, which I presume right here, and run in here and take a chip shot out of this window. Um, this is not very far. So that's a, a big mystery, um, why it's like that and, and why they didn't like, like we, I just can't make sense of this story. And of course we never could. Now, as we uh, finish out here, I got just one more big piece to talk about. So these are three separate audio files. Um, so the audience mic up top is from an audience mic out there. Um, that came to me from died suddenly. Thank you guys. I haven't done a full analysis yet. The second one is from Trump's mic. I had that from another recording. And then the third one is from the cell phone. One of those two cell phones that's out. Um, uh, no, so I made a mistake. This is the cell phone from those people who were over by the mic stand. Um, and so what I've done is I've lined up. I've lined the three of them up. And so uh, lined them up so that the booms are all arrive, are all on the timeline at the same time on these uh, audio file. So this is the boom way out there in front of the stand, in front of the, sorry, the uh, Trump's lectern area in front of the stage. This is the report of the bullet snapping over Trump's microphone. And this is the report of the gun. And then here is the boom that we hear uh, back at the cell phone that's, that's jumbling around that we heard there. And uh, where the guy said, it was on the roof, on the roof. And then you pop, 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 right? So first thing I do is, is I take this, I take this, I take this, I take this, and I group them, and I grab that as a group, and I, and I copy-paste, and then I slide it over, and I say, does the next set match? And the answer is, absolutely. That is just a direct copy-paste of that cluster of green symbols to the far left, and I drag it over. It maps on perfectly. Third time, does it do it? Yeah, you betcha. It maps on perfectly. So again, top audio from Died Suddenly second audio line from that link right there, third line um, from that um, piece right there. Uh, I might have mislabeled that last third one. Don't hold me to that one. I'll fix it if it's true. So get this. Here's what I, here's what I want. So those five shots, one, two, three, four, five. This is mysterious because these five shots here 
when you take a look at them from beginning to the, from the beginning of the first shot to the beginning of the fifth shot. So that's how fast you could take those five shots. It turns out that the total thing is only 0.775 seconds from beginning to end. Now, as a shooter, I'll tell you, you kind of have to work at it to get five shots off in 0.775 seconds. Um, and you can see the splits here because the first shot was two five, a quarter of a second, 0.256. But look at these, 0 0.18, 0 0.17, 0 0.15. I'm going to have to defer now. We're going to have to bring in, and I'm going to introduce you to somebody called Jerry Misalek. Because once you understand Jerry Misalek a little bit, this is just a minute. And then the other thing is just a couple of seconds. I have to introduce you to Jerry real quick because once you know Jerry, you're going to rethink about those five shots in a whole new way. In 1999, they sponsored a publicized attempt by shooter Jerry Michalek to challenge Ed McGivern's speed shooting record set back in 1932. Using a Smith & Wesson Performance Center built eight-shot revolver, Michalek attempted to both outshoot McGivern and set two new world records. Watch how fast this right, guy you is. Wanna you want to film this one? Go, Jerry! Go, Jerry! He's such yeah, a, he's uh, such a yeah, legend. 108 degree heat, I believe it was, down in Mississippi in front of a very You won't believe what uh, you're going to if, you if you don't know anything about guns. Uh, he did it. I mean, he Jerry did, is uh, like eight the rounds fastest. in one second on one target. Shooter ready. Stand by. Okay, all right. He uh, did eight rounds on four targets in 1.06. Ah. <laughs> and then he did... Uh, the six shots, a reload, and six shots in 2.9 This is a seconds. revolver reload. This isn't taking a mag out. This is a revolver. Oh, my God. All right. 2.99. That's Jerry Michalek. Okay. Here's why it's important. Turns out Jerry just happened to have a video out there showing how fast he could shoot five shots out of an AR style rifle. So this is the world's fastest. Let's start here. A 55 is kind of slow at this range. So I'm going to listen really good for that timer, get in the center and punch out five. See if we can make it under a second. Here we go. Now that was a little bit better. You saw how I was, I was punching out right on the timer there. Let's take a look at it. A point 96. Made it that time pretty easy. So all right, 96, we had a 15, a 12, a 13, a 12. So we're running good splits. We made the time pretty easy. Let's go back and look at that again. Total time of 0.96 hundreds. Let's go down range, take a look at it. Okay, guys, we're living over five yards here. Five Punched yards. Out five rounds and 0.96 hundreds of a second. Let's take a look at them. One, two, three, four, and five. I got a little bit excited here on the last one. I started raising my head up. So, but they're all in the A box. They're all right center, center of the A box. But I know you're not happy with that. I'm not either. We're going to make it a little bit harder. We're going to go ahead and put three in the A and two in the head and try to keep it in under a second. So I'm going to react three in the body, two in the head, and under a second. All right. So just to decipher that a little bit, the, when he said I had a 15 to 12, a 13 to 12, those are thousands, sorry, hundreds of a second, right? So. 0 0.15, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.12. That's the world's, one of the world's fastest shooters is cranking out shots that are at a 15 and a 12, a 13 and a 12. And it's only 0.53 seconds because this first part is the beep. Takes them about a half a second to get the gun up and on. Half a second, trust me, that's good. Uh, and then for the actual five shots, it's only 0.53 seconds. But this is the world's fastest guy. I mean, this is Jerry. Come on. And so here are his five shots. I've just made them a little brighter so you can see them. Now, here's the thing. If a guy like Jerry, who's one of the world's most accurate, fastest shooters, has that kind of a spread at five yards, what kind of spread do you think we're going to be seeing for a kid, as the null hypothesis goes, that this was a 20-year-old kid with who wasn't reputed to be a very good shooter, in fact, kind of a bad shot, according to the shooting team that wouldn't have him in high school, but maybe he improved and, you know, got better at range. And we don't know that, but we'd have to go talk to the range people. He was, he was at maybe, maybe he improved, but even if he improved, this is the world's best right here. This, I mean, there's nobody even close to this guy. And I think you can see that the idea of ranking off five shots 
as fast as you can, well, they start to spread. They just, they just, it's very hard to keep that all contained, obviously. Um, so what did we know? We, we, we know that, that, um, you know, Crooks has been lurking about and, oh, and by the way, uh, th- this is all going to come back in tomorrow. I'm going to show you where those five shots went and you're going to say, really? You sure that wasn't, maybe we should be looking for Jerry Mitchell out there. Cause there's just no way that this kid was able to crank off these. Cause look at these, these times right here, 18, 17, 15, these, this, this last one, that's a Jerry Mitchell number right there. Okay. That's pretty impressive. One, one, two, three, four. Whoa, my God. This is like for a shooter, for all you shooter people out there, get back to me. I think you could technically pull the trigger that fast, but could you stay on target or even close to on target at 140 yards? How good would you do? And then how good would you guess maybe Crooks could do? I will tell you, I'm going to, I bet you I'm shooting at a cone that's pretty fat at 140 yards. If I'm trying to, under the, the panic of the situation, Obviously, if I am the shooter in this situation, I'm going to be really hopped up. I'm going to be uh, very excited. I'm going to have a lot of adrenaline and I'm going to start shooting. And so, um, you know, the question is going to be how much accuracy would I have under that situation? Not a lot. This looks like the what I'm leaning towards here. This looks like a pro string to me. That's very disciplined trigger fire on those last four. A little bit longer on the first one, 0.256, but it drops down to 0.188, 0.175, 0.156. That's getting, that, that is really, yeah, that's, that's some discipline trigger action right there. Again, we don't know, but it's starting to stack up and say this smells and smells pretty badly. Um, As well, we have all this other stuff where we saw that Crooks was walking around. If you look closely, you'll see a person in the background. The timestamp is 506. And by the way, you can see on this thing, these, um, uh, these are the, this is the, the roof he would have been on right here. And these are the four, uh, AC stacks and the two story building would be right here. So I, I can't tell if this is him kind of looks like him. We'd have to let more forensic and anal- analysts, uh, dive in there and, and enhance, you know, the video appears to show Thomas Crooks lurking near a building just past the secure perimeter. If you look closely, you'll see a person in the background. The timestamp is 5.06. The video appears to show time. 5.06. Um, oh, this is right in the way. I just noticed this. Um, so at 5.11 or 5, 5.14 or 5.30, he's going to be right here taking a picture when somebody's taking a picture of him from right there. Click on that retaining wall. I can't see that window from here. It's too bad. At any rate, um, that's fascinating. All right. With that, uh, thank you very much. That's what I had to get out for today. This is starting to stack up. Thank you, everybody, for helping. The Citizens Investigation is going really, really well. We've got people who are working on 3D modeling. We're getting to chewing through all of the audio. We're starting to look through anything we can get on ballistics. We're starting to have uh, people are getting on site and starting to ask questions. This is fantastic. Keep it going, everybody. Anything I can do to help anybody, let me know. And uh, anybody who can help me, let me know. So again, info at peakprosperity.com. Send that there or just come on by Peak Prosperity. We got forums there. Drop your stuff straight in because we got to collect all this stuff and make sense of it. This can't be let go. We have to get to the bottom of this and uh, we need answers. We deserve answers, of course. That makes sense. So with that, thanks very much. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend if you're watching this on Sunday, like, like I'm producing it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.